Welcome back, 3DSSPP users. I'm Kelly with the University of Michigan Center for Ergonomics, and I am continuing to share with you some information and insights about the 3DSSPP software developed at the University of Michigan. This time, we're going to continue to look at entering posture. First thing, we're going to navigate back to our Body Segment Angles menu where we were working in the last video. To get to this menu, we are going to navigate to the Task Input drop-down menu and then locate the button titled Body Segment Angles. Click that and the Body Segment Angles menu will appear. If you don't already have a neutral pose showing up on your avatar view windows, we are going to start from that posture which you can easily get to by clicking Neutral T Pose over on the right hand side of the menu. In this video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at entering posture through the limb angles section of this menu. The first thing we're going to look at in that section of the menu are arm postures. Here we have arms sectioned out into right and left hands, forearms, and upper arms. There are two angles for each of the arm segments. Horizontal controls the forward and backward direction, and vertical controls the up and down direction. If we start with the upper arm section and begin slightly incrementing the horizontal angle number up with our mouse scroll wheel, we will see that a positive angle is going to move our upper arm forward with respect to our avatar's body in the horizontal plane. A negative angle number is going to direct this section of our avatar's arm behind the body. I'll set this angle at 45 degrees so it will be halfway to being completely forwards. I'll make the forearms angle the same 45 degrees and we can see that the forearm is now pointed forwards as well. We will do the same with the hand, entering 45 degrees, and now we can see that our avatar's entire right arm is at this 45 degree angle, pointing forwards. A good tip is to note that in the stick views, that the method of angle measurement is shown by red lines. The location of these angle measurement indicators will change depending upon which angle is selected. Another good quick tip here is to note that if you locate this button titled Symmetry below each of the left and right limb angle sections and click that, the changes you've made to one side will now be reflected in the other side of your limb angles. We also have the ability to move our avatar's arm positions up and down using the vertical angle section of the limb angles section. Here it's good to note that a positive angle means our avatar's limbs will be moving upwards, and a negative angle is the downward movement of an avatar's limbs. Right now, we have our arms at zero, which means that they will be pointed straight out to the sides. If we want our arms to be pointed 45 degrees upwards, we will simply follow the same method we used to manipulate the arms in the horizontal plane and apply that to the vertical dialog boxes right next to them. I'll enter 45 in the right section for the hand, forearm, and upper arm, and we will see that our avatar's right arm is now also pointed upward by 45 degrees. You can see how 3D SSPP measures that upward 45 degree angle of the avatar's right arm. We can then hit the symmetry button again and we'll see that our avatar's arms are now both angled upward by 45 degrees. Now it's time to look at leg angles. And to start with a clean slate we will hit the neutral T pose button on the right side here. With legs we see them segmented here into upper leg, lower leg, foot, and toe. And we see that in this neutral T pose, we have them all starting with angles of positive 90 degrees horizontal, with the upper and lower legs also having a negative 90 degrees vertical. These negative 90 vertical angles are showing that from the hip to the knee, and from the knee to the ankle, our limb angles are pointing straight down. To try an angle in which the knees are somewhat forwards, we can start by looking at the upper leg angle and entering a vertical angle of negative 45. Hit apply and you can see that the right leg is moved forward with a 45 degree bend of the leg at the hip. If I make the angle zero, the upper leg section will be directed straight forward. If I increment this angle upward with my mouse scroll wheel, you can see that you can indeed create positive angles for the leg angles, even if these postures might be slightly unrealistic for most people. The foot angle works similarly to the leg angles, starting here at 90 degrees horizontally, meaning that it is pointed straight forward and zero degrees vertically, meaning that it is flat on the floor or ground. If I increase that vertical angle, I'll be angling the foot upward. Likewise, if I angle the foot vertically negative, I will be angling the foot downward. Notice if you look at the top view, all of our leg angles are pointed directly forwards, and if you want to enter an angle that isn't straight ahead, all that you need to do is enter something other than 90. 
As I use the mouse scroll wheel to incrementally decrease the upper leg horizontal angle, you can see that it only changes the orientation of the upper leg. So when making adjustments via limb angles, you will want to make sure that, in this case, your foot also has its horizontal angle changed to be in line with the upper leg angle, like it would be if you were actually moving your leg around. Now let's look at this toe angle, which is actually at the ball of the foot joint, which is included in 3D SSPP because there are many scenarios in which, say, something might happen so that your heel might be coming off of the floor and you're supporting yourself from the ball of your foot. I'll take the left foot and start using the mouse scroll wheel to point the foot downwards. In this example, notice that the toe segment is still pointing straight out. This might be a case where the toe segment is resting on the surface of the floor, but the heel needs to be up for some reason. If you want to simulate a posture with a worker up on the tips of their toes, you can lower the angle of the toe to a negative number, which will point the toe segment downward. A couple of tips for using the body segment angles would be first, if you ever forget what positive and negative angles do for a given limb segment, just come into this section and play around with angles in this menu. You can very quickly see which angle values produce the types of postures that you want. Additionally, if you click to highlight any angle in this section, you will see the angle measurement represented in one of the avatar view windows in the main 3D SSPP interface. The last thing I want to remind you about is the undo button in this menu and in the edit menu. These buttons are helpful if you want to revert back to the avatar's previous posture after viewing a change. This feature is frequently used when entering posture angles. In addition, you'll see a redo button, which works much the same as the undo button, except that it will reapply any changes that you have recently undone. That's it for our part 3 tutorial covering posture entry in 3D SSPP. Check out further videos in this 3D SSPP tutorial series to learn more about how the software can help you analyze physical demands in the workplace. Thanks for watching.